today's episode is uh, Sasa Jimenez. Hi, Sas. Hello. Uh, of course, um, for those who don't know, which I'm sure uh, aren't a lot of people, so Sasa is uh, <laughs> one of our uh, most uh, well-known uh, fashion designers uh, in the country. Um, I've seen um, a couple of more than a couple of shows of Sasa. I've known her for a long time. Good friends with um, her mom and her dad, uh, which you can get into later on. But you know, just uh, full disclosure. Oh, so hi, Sas. Hi. Hi. Uh, so full disclosure, uh, Sasa and I are actually doing this as a as a take two. It's a reshoot yeah. uh, because our oh. first uh, taping, our first recording, was uh, bugged by uh, internet problems. Uh, because yeah. which is a nice segue to the way I'm gonna open the topic, Sas. Uh, Sasa is actually. Half and half now, a city girl and a country girl uh, country moving girl. out of out of yeah. the city during the, the pandemic. Um, so, you know, Sas, how how's that been? I mean, um, you know, in our first uh, episode, I asked you about you know how it's been an adjustment for you, etc. So, uh, you're still there. I mean, most of your time is still spent out of Manila, right? Yeah. So most of the time, I'm in Cavite, and I actually really enjoy it. I think. I enjoy the part where I'm with my dogs all the time. Um, when I'm in the city, I'm only with one or two of my dogs, but I have six. So when I'm in Cavite, I get to be with all of them. All of them. Yeah. And I guess because nga, we live out of the city, like the fear of, of the virus is not as, um, not as strong. Only okay. because there's like so much more space there in Makati because I live in a building. So it's um it's a lot of common spaces. So I get really paranoid about like touching things and passing through certain hallways and riding the elevator. And I don't really have to think about that when I'm in Cavite. So well, that's, that's interesting, no? Parang yeah. you, you can really feel the difference, no? I mean, the... Like yeah. the paranoia is left. Uh, the paranoia is less, no. A little, a little, a little less. So that's kind of um, that's a nice comfort. Plus, I'm I live in an apartment, and so it's nice to be in a house where you can like go out into the garden and things I didn't really. Oh. Hello. Okay, so there's obviously, <laughs> obviously there's one dog here. Um, fish? No, that's nothing. Anyway, see, see fish. So one of my dogs is um well actually my sister's dog is slightly blind in one eye already. Yeah, no, I heard. So um he's really jumpy. So when he hears like a, a faint noise, he starts to to bark and to panic. Pero one so eye talang. One, one eye. Is eye okay. One eye. He's not that old actually. He's um. He's only maybe five, five years old. It's um, it's hereditary. It's yeah, that's why. That's why now when I found out um from your Tita Jade, which actually note to the viewers, anyone who's watching this, um Sasa will maybe call me Tito later, which is actually I'm, I'm actually used to it because a few of the past episodes, ganon then they called me Tito. Just so just to give context, I've known Sasa for such a long time. Um, you know, I saw her when she was still like in, I think, grade school yeah. sense, or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, so I referred to my <laughs> wife as your tita. So when she told me nga what happened to Fish, I'm like, well, she's still young. I mean, diba? Yeah, so Fish is a dog, by the way. Fish yeah, is yeah, yeah. Name. Fish is not a oh. fish. <laughs> yeah. So, yun. So, yeah, it's nice to have my dogs here. They They just arrived today. Okay, so uh, who's there? So you have two now. So it's Max and Fish. Max and Fish, and they're they're here because they're the, usually the ones that come with me to the city. So they're kind of used to being in an apartment. Plus, all the uh, I mean, my other dogs are either too big or too yeah. noisy, yeah, too rowdy to bring <laughs> to bring here. So they like it. That's good. Yeah, That's good. yeah at least you have company there. Yeah, the right? And mm. Max, Max, Maximus has his own Instagram page, guys. Um, anyone he does. out there? He has his own <laughs> set of fans. Um, yeah, yeah. Marami siyang fans. Hindi ko kilala, but they they <laughs> write to him. 
they write to him and yeah. That's it's, cute. It's so What's cute. his IG handle nga sa sige, let's promote. Um him. Maximus doing things. Oh, ayan. So anyone who wants to get to know Maximus, just oh, yeah. hit him up on, <laughs> on Instagram. It. Yeah, and enjoy it. So anyway, going back to what we were talking about, sa so yeah, you're you're I you know I said you're half a city girl and half a country girl. Maybe more nga a country girl. You were telling me, but I, I mean know. you're you're more <laughs> there. Um, uh, and you know, and I asked you this during the first time we talked. And again, I you know I'd like to bring it up because it's it's very interesting to me how COVID or this you know whatever happened to us or whatever still happening to us this past year and a half, how it's affected you, uh, how it's affected your work. Uh, because you know, as as I mentioned. And, you know, again, I'm no fashion designer, but from what I know, it's, you know, fashion design, it's a very tactile, it's a very tactile creative process. Eh, diba? I mean, you need to work with fabric, you need to feel it, you need to work with models, you need to work with how the fabric falls, I mean, etc. So how, how, how did that change, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit and how, how is it now? So... When the pandemic started, it was really hard for us to to work because, well, number one, all the events were canceled. <laughs> so there was no one, no one really needed anything to wear. And we we specialize in customized like occasion wear. So it wasn't until the middle of the pandemic where I decided to explore the world of ready to wear and open an online shop which is what a lot of other brands did not just in fashion but people in food like a lot of people transitioned to like an online space and tried to you know peddle their wares there and it's been effective for a lot of brands and at first it was hard for us because we're so used to seeing each other in the studio so seeing the sewers there sourcing the fabric ourselves um talking to the suppliers and meeting up with suppliers so in the first um collection that we did in the pandemic what we did was we we started clearing out our studio and then we realized we had so much fabric waste so what we did was we made um we made a collection that was made of dead stock fabric. So all of the fabrics that we still had, and we tried to reimagine and redesign some silhouettes that we've done in the past and then kind of um, revive them for a pandemic collection. So that's, that's what started our online shop last year. And since then we've come up with, I think maybe three, three collections since then. Mm, mm. Um, so now we're, our online presence is like a, a constant thing. Like we constantly have new things and we're launching new items on the online shop. And in a way, I kind of enjoy it slightly more than before because it's a different kind of excitement, I guess. Mm. And the satisfaction is like um, not naman um, instant, but the pace is different. The pace is different. And I kind of like that fast-paced um, transaction with, with customers. It's really nice. Yeah, you know, it's a good point you were raising, though, because I'm sure it's a different, like e-commerce as a whole is is a different experience. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, it's very hard, right? It's hard. Um, um, especially, you know, because, you know, especially because of limitations in technology and also the pace of putting stuff out, et cetera, and, and conversion, I mean, you know, and, and taking care of payments. I mean, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a how do you call it? it? It's such a long, parang, and tedious process to, to succeed mm-hmm. in it. But also the rewards naman, di ba? Parang instant yung instant yung yung sales, instant yung feedback, di ba? Which which was different from before. Yeah, I think I enjoy the feedback the most because you already um you know how people are reacting to what you made already as opposed to like a custom made dress where you're kind of going through the journey together so you're mm. you and the customer are exploring where it, where it will end up 
in like this long slow process which i think is also exciting but then i guess because ready to wear is really new to me yeah. excited ako. so <laughs> Siguro, let's see next year. <laughs> you can ask me again next year. I might not be saying the same thing. Yeah, um, but how's the, res- enjoying it. how's the response been naman sa us from old and new customers? And it's been great. Um, of course, it's still hit or miss. I wouldn't say everything's an instant hit. Some, some things like take a bit of time to marinate until people kind of get com- comfortable buying certain things. And then sometimes it's really, they're not flying off the shelves because there's nowhere to go. <laughs> there's, yeah, exactly. Um, we're, I think people are really buying things now just, just for pure pleasure or maybe just to feel good at home again. But there is no need to buy mm. um clothing right now yeah um, except for ano right i mean I, I remember i remember one of the first products that you actually came out with at the beginning of the pandemic were the masks um yes. diba? and yeah and your, your tita and kish you know of course got a few um how was the response to that i'm curious because like me diba? you're correct eh? Parang you, people don't need a lot of things but but like many of the things I buy, I actually went on a binge on different kinds of masks. You know, I, I you know, I, I have these masks. A lot masks of people that, did the same. Yeah, diba? Parang I have leather masks. I have, you know, I have masks with fans on them, etc. So, uh, how was that? Because I feeling ko nun, that was super relevant when it came in, which actually would lead me to my next question. But how 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 was the response to those? Did did, did people like feel a little bit better that they were, you know, they were wearing masks that they liked rather than masks that... Right. I would get some messages saying that I'm so relieved that I can, you know, finally get a mask that maybe goes with my outfit or that doesn't, you know, doesn't make me look so sad because I think we did it more because it was like um, an uplifting product more than anything it wasn't um that's that's kind of the nature of the clothes that we make it's like an uplifting um kind of thing it's not we, we weren't making the ready to wear things because we knew people were partying or they had places to go to it, it was really just to cheer people up and and making the masks allowed us to do something like that and it was nice to see people um, to see people wearing them because, you know, in the beginning, people were kind of iffy about wearing the masks. Nobody wanted to wear them, but now it's really part of our, it's part of our day. You don't, it's like having your keys in your pocket. You don't leave the door without your, your keys. So now it's like, it's really part of your outfit. Um, mm-hmm. Whether it's it's something that looks good on you or something that, you know, is purely functional. Um, yeah, we wanted we wanted to include like um, wouldn't want to say like a happy vibe, but something that you know makes it less um, that makes it more palatable to like include yeah, yeah. Your everyday wear. Correct. Yeah. Which is you know, which is I, as I said, is leading to the next question I wanted to ask you, which is something we have also talked about before, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit further and i want to talk about relevance right um because i was saying for example when the pandemic hit and you know you were in you were in that position that you had the material you had the the manpower that could put it together you put out a product that is relevant to the times um which is good right but i on on the flip side also um and maybe pre-pandemic you know I've, i've talked to some people who would actually ask parang you know, parang what, what? How relevant is fashion still in today's mm-hmm. world? Is it still relevant? Is it just a niche? You know, it, is it just a niche segment that you know the one percent would, would would find relevant? Right. Is it 
you know, is it elitist? I mean, what, what's your take on that? I mean, now now that the world has evolved to what it is, what do you think is the role of fashion? Uh, and fashion, as you see it, uh, I mean, let, you know, mm-hmm. I, I guess fast fashion is a different topic altogether. But yeah. fashion, as you see it, how do you think it it plays um, a role still in 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 who we are today? So I think. Because when people say the word fashion, they immediately think like, um, like designer bags and and runway shows and things like that. But fashion is actually like a really broad term um, that includes sportswear, activewear, uniforms, and anything that has to do with you know adorning ourselves with something, whether it's functional or purely decorative. And I think the role of fashion is number one is to signal like a change of the times. Like I think now that the world has gone through a really big shift, the role of fashion is to signal to people like what kind of species are we, you know, like moving forward, what kind of, you know, what kind of people are we going to be? Are we going to be frivolous? Are we going to, are we going to, wear things that are purely functional is that how we're going to move around the world these days and that's still you know that's yet to be determined but i think the role of fashion will actually be very big um moving moving on from this pandemic it's going to it's going to change the way we live it's going to change the way we we see other people it's going to change the way we move around how we travel how we you know how we choose where to go where to eat it's going to it's going to be like a whole change in lifestyle and and fashion i think will be at the center of that yeah i mean good point um has has your brain changed (laughs) i mean has your design brain changed because of what has happened, are you now looking at, like me, for example, if you ask me, right, um, what, what do I see myself buying and wearing when, you know, when I really get to go out? And I would say I would look for pieces, which I've always had, no, but I'd, I'd probably look for pieces that have really integrated form, function, design. I mean, you know, that they're not, yeah. I would look at them as separate things because yeah, now I you're need, looking I, for everything in one yeah, garment. Diba? I need to put I, I need a place to put a mask, which I as you said, it, it's like my wallet now or my watch or my keys. It yeah. needs to be there. So uh, has your brain changed? Have you found yourself being rewired because of what happened? Or are you still like your core is still the same? I don't think well, I think anyone who says that they haven't changed from the year that has passed is a terrible person <laughs> because how can you not you know evolve from like this life changing event um i think the only thing that hasn't changed is like the personality of the brand and the personality of the kind of clothes that i make but then after the pandemic I'm definitely thinking of the customer even more now because I'm I'm her. I'm also like, I like to shop. I think of how am I going to use this? How am I going to wash it? Where did this fabric come from? Those are things that we never used to think about, but now, now we do. And that's definitely changed how we move around and make decisions in the studio. Yeah, because I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this I remember like very clearly. Because you made you made Kenisha's prom dress. Prom dress. Prom or ball, like prom. Parang like, prom or yeah, prom. like a grad ball. Yeah, or something, something like that. One of yeah. and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I distinctly remember that you 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 you, you built a pocket into the dress. I did. <laughs> yeah, and I was there, right? So, you know, during the fitting, I was there, remember? And then 
And then I, rem- I remember that distinctly because he said, okay, I'm putting this pocket because you need a place to put your phone, you know, when yeah, you're moving around, etc. <laughs> which, you know, which now looking back, you know, on, on, on hindsight, which I think was a brilliant idea, number one. Second, I think it's really the, 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 the present and the future of, of clothes, right? Or, or mm-hmm. clothing or, or, or fashion. It's really finding ways to... Um, integrate um, what we need and what we want diba? in, in, in right. the way we show up. Okay, okay. Let's, let's... Well, actually, I mean, I used to put, and I still do, I still put pockets in dresses, even formal dresses, only because I, I love pockets because when I am in a social setting and I'm, I'm nervous or or something. I don't know what to do with my hands. So I, okay. I like having pockets because it's something to do that's not texting. Yeah, 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 um, exactly. Texting can come off like a little bit rude, but then yeah. I think the most fashionable way to kind of turn this anxiety into something, you know, um, fashionable is to like have your hands in your pockets. Yeah, so it, that's it, that. The real reason why I put pockets. Um, well, I know and yes, exactly you what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Just my hands are always in my pockets, also when I'm you know, yeah. when I'm around so people. I don't know what to do, and I have no one to talk to, so I just have um an activity, <laughs> something okay. to do. Something. And then, do you see yourself, Anosas? Because you know, I I know you, or I've known you. I've known your design. I've known your clothes. I've known your aesthetic to be. You know, very happy, uh, very positive. Um, um, you know, it, it it really showed in you know in, in your clothes. It still shows in your clothes. Um, is that changing? Um, is there is there is there a is there such a thing as you know a designer maturing into something and changing styles, or do you see yourself, you know, continuing? Because kami ng kita mo. You know, when we see a dress, ah, okay, that's Sasa's. Or when we go to your show, parang, ah, okay, it's Sasa, di ba? We know it. Yeah. Do you see that continuing or do you see it evolving into something more mature? Um. Yeah, I think, I think like, evolving is inevitable if you're gonna stay, if you want to see fashion, if you want to stay in business. Um, but I really, I and I have experimented with other other styles before and I think one of the advantages of me starting really young um starting my business really young was really knowing like what I enjoyed what I like to do and who who I want to be and what I want to say and that's really at the core of anything that I do whether whether I have a phase where I'm kind of brooding or it's like a sexier more mature kind of design at the core of it you still really see like the personality of the brand which is like feminine and really um in a way kind of whimsical and uplifting and kind of fantastical which which i still really enjoy i mean there are days where i'm where i question the direction of where i'm going but like that's um it's also a very uncomfortable space for me to be in. So I think that's really healthy because you're constantly trying to recreate this, this personality and that's where the challenge is. Yeah, and creativity, you know, creativity is bred in discomfort. I mean, when, when you're so comfortable, that's actually, yeah. personally, when I'm super comfy, it's like that's when my creativity like plateaus. Yeah, you feel diba? dead. <laughs> yeah, you feel dead. Like there's no yeah. tension, diba? So. To, to a certain extent, uh, it's it's good. But I, I'll just go back to something that you said, no, and, and you were saying that you started really young. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and like personally, I've seen the journey or a part of the journey. Um, can you just like um, talk talk? You know, the the audience or the people watching through how it all began. I mean, I know we've talked about this, but you know, um, I, I asked you, hi, parang, did you always like to draw? Did you enjoy drawing? Um, yeah. yeah, so, and I know, and maybe we can talk a bit about uh, your mom and your dad, you know, very, very dear, like, 
friends of 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 ours um uh you know the the late uh, mon jimenez and abby jimenez um uh, how did they influence you how did they nurture you uh, were they always behind this creativity or um did they you know did they empower you how did they arm you with what you needed uh, no just, just talk us through that mm -hmm. well so first of all yes my parents were very very supportive and being creatives themselves i think they already saw from an early age like what i really enjoyed so when i was choosing choosing a school choosing a course um they really tried to steer me into going to art school which is um I, when i grew up i i would always just hear my friends saying that they had to fight and beg their parents to let them go to an art school or go into like a creative course which is a totally different um, experience for me. They were very supportive because they knew, they knew where it could lead. Um, they knew it could be a business. They knew it was something that I enjoyed and they knew, they, I'm sure they knew that if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have finished anything. So I'm sure maybe to save them some time. <laughs> um, into art school um and and they were right i mean it was i wasn't really into school in high school but when i went to fashion school i was never absent i was always in class i was i did really well um so yeah i mean i think early on i had a really good support system going into fashion but then in terms of how it started um i didn't know that i wanted to be in fashion at an, a young age i only really knew when i was already in fashion school because going into it i still had my doubts na maybe maybe i'll stay here maybe i'll go somewhere else but it wasn't until i was in actually i i was actually in school that but, i knew so it sorry to just to just to interrupt you so you went to but i know you spent one year in college here in Manila. i did i yeah. did i just and, wanted to see <laughs> i went to ateneo which i really really enjoyed um yeah. i also met a lot of my you know lo my longtime friends there um and it wasn't because i didn't enjoy it it was just that i wanted to do something else yeah and then after that you went to you went to um just so you know just so the the people who are watching know. yeah yeah so you went to fashion school in in la yes and i was there yeah i finished i finished my whole course there before coming home and i started working here mm -hmm. so how was that experience i mean you know i'm sure a lot of <laughs> a lot of young people dream of you know yeah. dream of leaving the country etc so did it's you hear now you hear more about it now yes but do uh -huh. you think do you think it was an advantage for you and i use the word advantage very loosely but but did did you, did you think that by going overseas it actually would you know it gave you a, a you know a, a more aggressive start when you came home or you know for the time that? that i started yes but i think if i had done that now i mean i wouldn't really be as impressive <laughs> um at that time i guess it helped me it helped me a lot and but but starting my fashion brand here was parang school in itself it was yeah um i think half the things i learned in fashion school could not be applied here because we have a totally different system here and a totally different kind of um fashion industry so i i had to learn as i went along so it was yeah. it was also like a hard process in the beginning okay kasi nga yeah, I would imagine, like, I, you know, the, the, I've spoken to a bunch of people. I've spoken to, yeah, I know a couple of directors, you know, gone abroad to study and 
a lot of designers, graphic design. I mean, you know, it's all sorts of people. And and you know, as you can see, there's also a dog barking here. So it's I, Max, I'm sorry, I keep looking up <laughs> because Max is like going up the stairs, and my stairs has um like kasha she, so when <laughs> so I'm I'm watching out for him. But yeah, bumbana siya. Okay, then Jana, si Ozzy is getting bored here. But anyway, so going back to what I was saying, parang they were saying uh, na, you know, it was a good experience in film school, for example. You know, you get to meet a lot of directors, cinematographers, uh, production designers, and you know, you're exposed to the world. Mm-hmm. But then when you get home and you're, you know, you're just filled with so much idealism and I'm going to do yeah. this for the industry. Yeah. Then they come home and they're sort of, did I really need to leave? Because, what can I apply? Um, yeah. And there was some sort of crisis for them professionally. Did you there's ever feel that? Or, yeah, yeah. When you come home, um, and you're still kind of naive because you you did go abroad to study, but you know you you didn't live your life here around the people who are actually working here so you don't know what it's like and that's kind of what I experienced um I didn't know anybody in the fashion industry like I don't come from um a family that was in fashion I didn't go to school here so I didn't know any of the names I didn't know who I could approach to maybe ask some questions maybe mentor me and um yeah that was part of the challenge of kind of maybe launching the brand. Yeah. It took a while before I um could prove myself <laughs> worthy of like maybe being part of Philippine Fashion Week like with mm. yeah, it wasn't um it wasn't an instant thing. But mm. once I was there, it was easier to work through it. Yeah, because I remember your first show We, you know, all of all of the titos and titas were watching I know. proudly <laughs> and cheering. Half my audience were titos <laughs> and titas. Like, really, thank you guys. Thank you. How did that kind of feel, Sas? I mean, how did you know, you, you, you're you're here and then you go to college for a year here, then you leave for LA. You know, you mm-hmm. go through that entire experience in LA, and then you come home, and then then eventually you do your first show. How did that feel? I mean, was it overwhelming? Was it? It was so overwhelming. I I agreed to do the show, um, not knowing what the job entailed. Um, <laughs> they okay. So I I met with the producer of Philippine Fashion Week way before way before I did that show, and he was kind of on the fence about me. Um, he didn't know who I was or um, what I could do. So he he met with me, but it didn't really amount to anything. It wasn't until, um, I guess he read like a short article about me. I forget where. I think mm-hmm. it was either, either, either Inquirer or Philippine Star. Oh my God, I'm sorry, whoever I might offend. Um, Like some someone wrote about me for um, a newspaper, like uh, young designers, and I guess siguro na wala na siyang ibang matanong kung sino ng pwede niyang feature. So pinicture niya ako. Ano ba? Okay. So, totoo, like so I had like this ten piece collection that I had. Um, I was working on it at home. I wasn't planning on doing anything with it. I was just trying to kind of apply what I had learned. And I guess it was a slow news weekend. So I, I guess the, the, the one-fourth page became like a half-pager that, that weekend on the lifestyle section. So medyo na, palaki, medyo na palaki yung mga picture namin. And the producer of Philippine Fashion Week saw it and he remembered my name. Um, from from like when I introduced myself maybe a year before, so he gave me a shot. He, yeah, he he took a shot and he offered me a spot on Philippine Fashion Week, and he was explaining to me 
um, the kinds of shows that were included. So you could be in a group show where you can do 10 pieces. You can do like a small group show where you could do like 20 to 30. And then he said, but there are designers that do solo shows that do 40 to 60 piece collections. Sabi oh ko, my God. Solo. <laughs> Siyempre. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi ambisyosa talaga ako. Okay. ako. Because my, I, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't thinking. I was really young and kind of naive about going into it. I was thinking, I, I don't know if I can do a group show. Wala akong kilala dun. Kind of like stupid things like that. And I was thinking, wala naman akong trabaho. Ang dami kong time. Ang dami kong time to work on this. And it was, um, it was hard. I mean... But I can imagine harder now because I don't have the energy. At that time, I had so much energy. So how many pieces how was that? How many pieces um, was that show, Sas? I, I think 40, 45. Yeah, it was a lot there. I mean, now. <laughs> we were saying, you know, when, you know, when we were there, parang, you know, 40, 45 pieces for a first show was... At, at that time, I didn't think that was a lot. I, did, I didn't think that was a lot at that time. I don't know I'm why. I'm sure it felt like a lot when you were executing that. It felt like a lot once we were there. Because like 10 dresses down, you're like, okay, ang dami ko pang gagawin. So, um, yeah, I don't think I can do that <laughs> anymore, I think. Um, but then, because I started that way, I kept at it. So every season, I would... Yeah, yeah big collection so that would be like a biannual thing um kept me busy for the first five years mm. um and it was good it was a. Uh, it was um i'm really grateful that i got that opportunity it was like a it was an experience that other people weren't you know blessed to have mm. um but yes. <laughs> yeah, but when it's there, you take it, right? it again. You just grab it, yeah. When it's there yeah. in front of yeah, you. Yeah, it was there. It was there. So I, I tried it up. Okay. That quick question, lang, and I asked you this also during when the first first time we talked. Do you need to know how to draw to get into fashion design? Just ask a lot. Because <laughs> you know, for us like who who don't know anything about it, parang yeah. there's a certain style. <laughs> of, you know, when, when I see the drawings, parang, yeah, I mean, a fashion designer obviously drew this. Right. Do you learn that? I mean, it's not taught you in school. You learn that in school. And the okay. reason why fashion sketches look the same-ish or have the same-ish proportions is because the way they teach it to you is when you're doing traditional figure drawing, the size of the human body or its proportions are measured by head. So how many, as big as the head. So the length of a normal traditional human figure would be eight heads, but a fashion drawing is nine, nine heads. Nine. So may extra, okay. may extra length, may extra broadness yung shoulders. The, sometimes the waist is like unusually small the proportions are kind of um sci-fi looking and then of course um each designer puts their own flair into yeah, it yeah so, yeah so but the proportions nga are and you're correct the proportions, the proportions are the are, same because yeah, that's I mean, what makes you in full yeah. as a traditional fashion sketch of course correct. now you can sketch it any way you want but no yeah. you don't have to know how to sketch to be a designer, and I get asked that a lot. I I taught a uh, collection development class maybe two weeks ago, mm. um, and that was part of um, the discussion. Um, it's it's useful if you know how to sketch, but it's not the only way you can communicate your designs. I mean, mm. if if you can find a way to present and communicate your ideas to a customer or to your sewers, then, then great. And there are different kinds of sketches. You can mm. also sketch things in a technical way, which is like a flat sketch. Yeah. So it's, um, it's more of like sketching 
a blueprint. Okay. So if you were um if you were an architect or an interior designer, like the fashion sketch is like a schematic, like a three dimensional drawing and then like a floor plan would be like a flat sketch mm. you have options so i wouldn't say it's a requirement okay as long as you can um put forward what's in your head i think yes, that's the, yes. the, the, anyway. the point of it is like making the garment correct correct because yeah. have you seen on the side have you seen cruella i have I mean, that's, yeah. that's, why, that's why I also asked that because we, we, we saw it like two weeks ago and you know yeah. such a fun such a it's fun film fun. and then you know and, and I just realized diba, there's really this certain commonality among designers I mean it's such a diverse field but then there's parang there's a there's something common that cuts across all designers you know throughout the years and yeah, that's why I wanted to ask about the sketches and the drawings. Just because <laughs> that's the first thing that pops in people's heads. Yeah. One well, of the first things. It's part things. of the training, supposed to be. Yeah. It's part of your training if you're formally trained. But I wouldn't say it's a requirement. Some of the best designers aren't really the best sketchers. That's why you have um, like big fashion houses also have illustrators at their disposal. So. Okay. Yeah. Not a great so thing. yeah, let's 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 skip uh let's before we wind down, let's skip like let's skip a subject. What's your favorite piece? What's the favorite piece of clothing that you own? That I own. That you Not own. That I yeah, that you that own. I own. That you but actually I'm use, huh? Heat up your own. One uh, lang, one favorite. Let's get three. <laughs> three favorite pieces. <laughs> One na lang parang mas mahirap yung three. Sige. Um, my favorite piece of clothing. Um, I'm sure it's a jacket of some sort. For somebody who lives in the tropics, I have an unusually large collection of jackets. Wala <laughs> namang mapuntahan, di ba? Um, Kasi ginawin ka ba? Or it's just really more for the look? It's more for the look. Hindi ako ginawin. In so fact, taste ganda. I thought, yeah, I, yeah. I like the look of like layering and um, I like mixing menswear with, with women's wear. So I think one of my jackets, I don't know which one, it's hard to choose, but it's definitely a jacket. That's <laughs> interesting for someone who's not Ginawin. No. Which is, I know, no, which is, you know, you know, to me, my biggest frustration is like me, I like, I, I really don't enjoy like dressing, dressing up, but I enjoy good clothes, right? But the problem is I'm so mainitin that right. my my clothing options are so limited, but that I can't really find pieces that and you know I don't have the proportion Western proportion. So you know it, it it's always a challenge. Like um even if I go like super fast fashion, like if I go Uniqlo. They're small for me because you know a lot of it's based like, on Japanese size. Uniqlo sizing. runs small. Yeah, Uniqlo runs small because they have um Japanese sizing Correct. Correct. and a lot of it's like kind of tapered and yes. not really um yeah not really built for everyone. But I think the challenge um your challenge now <laughs> is to maybe familiarize yourself with different fabrics so it's it's more of finding fabrics that are presco mm. than finding a style that's that's presco like it doesn't have to be um like it can be a linen shirt but it doesn't have to be a hawaiian shirt yeah exactly so it can, yeah it can be there are so many types of so many types and weights of linen but it's like a really breathable fabric and you and it's it's actually quite common that they use it in suits, they use it in shirts, it's um it's used in like dressier silhouettes. Maybe that's something yeah, that's something you can keep in mind next time if if temperature is kind of um the challenge. Yeah, when it's you're always shopping. been a challenge. But you know, yeah. like your like your dad. Uh, you know me naman, I'm like inspector gadget as well, the boss. Yeah. So, I'm really enjoying looking at these new, like Sony, for example, just came out mm -hmm. with this 
with this um, line of shirts that has air conditioning built in. Have you seen that? There's a there's an air conditioning yeah. unit that's built into the back of the shirt, and it actually cools the entire shirt. It's not. Does it work? Yeah, it's Did not just get... a fan. As in the fabric itself allows mm -hmm. the. It's part of the air yeah. conditioning. So I'm geeking <laughs> out on all of these things. Na parang, yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, I think this, to me, uh, for me, I mean, of course, people have different tastes, but for me, that's really the future for me. Especially when I, I, get, as I get older. Right? That's one of the subjects in fashion school is textile science. Mm. It's one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, that's super because interesting. They, they teach you about um, the technology of fabric and how it evolves. There's thousands of types of fabrics and you know, a million different ways to use them. There's even fabric that can play music. Like if like you how? scratch, it's a type of fabric. They, they don't use it for clothes yet, but then it's a type of fabric that when you, I think when you scratch it, it makes a certain sound. So when you scratch it in different areas, you get different notes. It's, um, it's like a new technology. Well, at that time, it was new. I'm sure now. I don't know where they use it now. So you haven't seen it put into, ano, into action? Not yet. Not yet. But you see a lot of um, technology in, in textile um, on the red carpet. Like I think that was two years ago when Zendaya came as um, Cinderella and she had this uh, glowing kind of light up dress. So that's that's a fabric that's um, quite futuristic. Yeah, I've seen those. Actually, that's on my list as well. So I've seen shirts that have LED, like built-in LEDs that can yeah. like project whatever you want it to project from your phone. So anyway, I'm geeking wow. out on all of these things. In fact, I was going to buy na this mask. Talking about masks, right? I was going to buy this full face mask that you know that does LEDs in the full the full front part of it, and you can just like do things with it. But but wow. anyway, <laughs> I digress. Pero ako on my list talaga number one is that Sony shirt. Um, it's out na eh. They're selling it in Japan. I will uh, I, I will do some research about it. Yeah, it's a uh, it, but they've only fabricated. Parang it's a it's an ano, it's an inside shirt palang. Okay. Um, uh, like an undergarment, but eventually I think they're gonna roll that out to you know. Anyway, on that subject, uh, before, yeah, before we wrap up, um, what do you think? Um, and I'm sure you've you've been asked like for for forecasts so many times, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you know we see ourselves in this situation. I mean, I'm talking about the Philippines. They're saying that we're about six months behind from the rest of the world, behind mm -hmm. the rest of the world in terms of you know, vaccines, people going out. You know, you've seen, um, you know, the U.S. suddenly springing back to life, although, right, you know, right. in some countries now they're locking down again. And I think it's going to be this constant push and pull between opening mm -hmm. up and locking down. I think that's yeah. the reality. But how do you see your future, Sas? Um, I know we've talked about your e-commerce, um, your e-commerce, um, you know, getting into e-commerce. Um, do you see yourself, uh, how do you see the industry? How do you see yourself maybe in the next six months, one year, um, you know, depending on where, where we're going, where do you think this is going to all end up for you? Um, I'm still pretty hopeful that when things are open again. I mean, it might take a while, but we will get there. We will get there. I'm still hopeful that we get like a golden age of design where people will start enjoying buying, wearing, borrowing, um, what, whatever, whatever type of purchasing <laughs> interests you. Um, I hope we get to that place where where we kind of enjoy that part of ourselves again. I think that's something that a lot of people have lost this year is to feel good. And, and I think that's something that everyone looks forward to. That's why everyone's really itching to open up again, to go out, to see people, because 
um, I don't think people realized how important and empowering it was until we lost that ability to to decorate ourselves. It used to be this thing that was only reserved for other people, people who could afford it, people who had things to go to, people who liked to go out. But now that we've all been been at home for the past year and we've, we've lost that chance, I think that's something that people are really looking forward to going back to and maybe exploring a little more. So I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that we'll get there. Um, I don't know what the future holds. I'm sure it's going to be like a hard climb for people who are in this industry, but I just judging from the energy of my peers and I guess the people that I've spoken to, I think people are really excited to get back to work. I think that's, that's the most hopeful part of everything. I think people are really just ready, <laughs> yeah, ready to, to charge. Yeah. 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 And people are ready to go back to work. People are ready to get married. People are ready to you yeah. know, celebrate their proms and all of yeah, those things. I think people are, want to give themselves a chance to enjoy again. We really lost that, that ability. <laughs> the past year. So I think that's something everyone misses. Yeah. Tita John, I can't hear you. Oh, it's a mute term. Yeah. <laughs> old, old age. Okay, that last, last two questions. What, what actually comes to mind is, are, are, you, are you a BTS fan? Are you ARMY? Yes. Okay. okay. So, this permission is late to dance. Onset. <laughs> this is late, late. I've only, me and Ate, my sister, only got into this whole BTS craze a few months ago. Kasi wala nang ibang panood. Like, you've gone through all of the shows on Netflix, you've watched everything on HBO, Amazon Prime. So, we were exploring um, YouTube and I'm sure everyone gets suggested some sort of BTS content whether it's like a music video or something. So we watched one. Ayun, parang five months na kami nanunod. <laughs> yun yung entry drug. Amazing. I, I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy the joy that they give. Um, it's, I guess, it's a form of escapism for me. Um, when I'm watching BTS, I don't really um, feel the darkness, the looming darkness in the outside world. I'm really just in this like BTS world where everyone's dancing, everyone's in nice clothes, everyone's happy, you know, everyone's like loving and supporting each other. That's kind of like the world that we want to be in. So it was really easy to get into it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it happened to your tita as well and Kish. Like, I know, I the, know. The adoption was, was, was out of this world. And anyway, the reason I brought it up is, of course, you know, I'm in the same house with them all the time. So, I mean, it's just constantly looping <laughs> in every room. And, you know, today, I'm sure you saw it, Permission to Dance yes. came out. Um, yes. and, and I think, you know, th this whole concept of, you know, and it was a collab with Ed Sheeran and, you know, and when you yeah. when you really listen to the lyrics, it's this parang, it's just waiting. People are waiting to burst kasi right. from this sadness. Oh, uh, I, ako. <laughs> <laughs> when I when so okay, so when I first heard the song, hindi ko siya maintindihan. I was like, okay, I had to read the lyrics. Na iyak ako. <laughs> na -iyak ako. <laughs> -iyak ako because na like this whole uplifting energy is so touching it's very touching it's very infectious um that's that is the kind of energy that we all want we all are dying to you know be happy again yeah and i think because half maybe not half but you know i look at it from the outside <laughs> because i'm a blink you know that that's my Me thing too. Me yeah too. so so I know. when I look at them, when I look at 
BTS, for example, and <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> I mean, I do, I can't believe we're actually. I'm actually trying to analyze it, but There's you know, so to much me, advanced. <laughs> yeah, to, to me, because aside from the music. Of course, the fashion's a big, you know, their styling is a big, yeah. a big part of, of who they are and a big part of their success. And, but I think, you know, and I look at it, I look at how they've exploded in the tita specially scene during the pandemic. Kami na yun. Because of the fashion. <laughs> the tita and the demographic. It, it's really this, this, ano, yeah, this feeling of hope, this feeling of mm-hmm. everything is not dark after all, di ba? And, and I think, mm-hmm. You know, I'm really like I told you in our last conversation. I'm really looking forward to your next show in whatever form mm-hmm. it comes, whether it's online or 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 physically, because I think that's the world. That's what we all need now, de right? ba? just these visual signals that we're still alive. And there's yeah. Still life after there's this. still so, life. Yeah, there's a life to be lived. I think that's yep. the. That's what permission to dance. Is yes, all exactly, about. exactly. So mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to that, Sas. And just to end this, um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 and I, 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 and you can not talk about it or not talk about them, but I wanted to ask you about your your ink, your tattoos. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite one? Because I'm, you know, I, you know that I, I have ink as well. What's yeah. your favorite one? So, so my my. Dad never knew. He knew I had two tattoos, but I have five. Allah! <laughs> I have. Five. I've had five for a while now. For a while, they're not big. They're not big. They're all flowers. I don't have. Yeah, I don't have anything that's not a, a flower. But my favorite one is this one. Yeah, I, I, um, I remember. They that, are yeah. sweet peas. Um, I got this in Korea. I went to Korea because there's this tattoo artist that I really, really liked. And she was based there. So during a trip, I made an appointment with her. Luckily, I got a spot. So um, I think What's that's my name? favorite because it's, um, because it's the prettiest looking one. I didn't, I don't get tattoos because they have um, meaning. I try not to attach any emotions to the tattoos so that I don't end up regretting them. I just think they look nice. Yeah, and it's part of your, it's part of how you show up. I mean, it's part of how you express yeah, your part yourself. of the outfit. So, yeah. um, her name is Yon, and she's part of Studio Sol. Okay. S-O-L. So um, Studio Sol. Yes. But I know you also have, Deba, you also go to a tattoo artist here in Manila. I to um I have two tattoos by Luigi Laksamana, who is yeah. a female Filipina tattoo artist. My first tattoos were from her. Okay. My okay. first tattoos were from her. And I really love the way she works. I love her style. Um I'm really comfortable around her. Sorry, I have three pala by Luigi, not two. <laughs> <laughs> tatlo, pat, tatlo pala. Okay. And do you see yourself getting more? No. No I more think, na. Yeah. I think I'm done. Okay. I think that's okay. it now. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so, me, I want more. Eh, but really? I'm trying to convince Kish to get her first. Actually, she wants to get it now. She just yeah. doesn't know no. what it is. Yeah, so I told her, take your time. You know, you don't want to rush into yeah. it. It needs, needs to feel correct and right. Yeah. Also, ha- she yeah, she can have fun with it. There's no deadline exactly. for it. Um, yeah, I'm done. I, I don't really get the... Um, when people say they get addicted to the... I don't. I still think it's really painful. Yeah, it, because <laughs> um, it is. And it's it's uncomfortable, but I've never gotten... I think this is the biggest one, and uh, that's not even okay. big. Okay. So I don't have anything bigger than that. The, all the other ones are really small. Yeah, and they're mostly like very fine, the right? Fine, fine lines. Yeah. yeah. So nothing, nothing crazy. Okay. Good. Okay, nice. Nice way I to guess end now my dad knows I have five tattoos. 
I, well, I'm sure he already knew and you know and he could see more from yeah, there. I'm sure, I'm sure he knows now. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, Sas, thank you. I'm keeping you, you know, occupied on a Friday night. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for for doing this uh, uh, take two, but it's really <laughs> yeah. nice take two. I hope I hope we got it. No, this is it. I hope we got I'm, it this I'm, time. I'm, I've been checking the how it's you know how it's yeah. uh, coming out. It's good. So, Sas, again, salamat from your tito, from you know from the entire Thanks, Amon tito John. family. Thank you for sharing you know sharing all of these things within the hour. I hope I can invite you back. Um, you know, like we, like we said, parang as as you know, as things evolve, I'd like to find out how you are evolving as well, and how you know how how things are evolving. So, I'll just, you know, I I hope we can have have you back um, more than again, you know. Thank you. Okay, so have a have a good have a good weekend, Sas. Take care. You too. Hi to everyone. All right, you, there then. Say hi to everyone for me. All right, bye, bye Sas. Bye.